I am Carol Bros, a retired music teacher currently working for the Golden Anthem Foundation in Chicago. I am talking about becoming a triple threat in tech. The commitment to creating your own artwork and photography, the ability to compose your own music and then producing your own movies. This means no more Google Images, no more royalty-free music, and mashups of YouTube. Once you take the plunge to be a triple threat, it is life-changing in the way you interact with all of the arts. You begin to create more, learn more, and share more. Everything you create is also produced by you, so there are no copyright issues. Art is my weakest link. So, recently I've surrounded myself with artists, such as Trissa Flugestad, who is committed to having her students create original artwork and songs. Her flugel fix have become a central part of her curriculum. Musical songs are about art created for students by students. Well, I'm here with Trisha. I'm really excited. We, were, we just presented at a conference and we never really get to see each other face to face. So it's sort of neat that we actually are together because we really virtually see each other a lot. Right, and we do so, our podcast. Right, we do our podcast. So um, I'm so excited to talk about this because you have inspired me so much to draw. That's been my latest focus. I've actually done more art than I've done music in the last month. Wow. I am like a little house of fire on this. And I think it's because I realize that I want to be a triple threat. And that means that I want to be able to draw, I want to be able to take pictures, movies, uh, of course music and video and storytelling, which we saw today too. So I want to be able to do it all, and you are the master. Some of the things that you do are, is so amazing. So y you started out with a lot of drawings, and then you went to movies too. How was, your, how was your story? How did that start when you got into music and all of that? How did that journey begin? Um, well, actually, it all just pieces together. When we want to tell a story, it was, it had a stronger impact if we had good visuals, and then if we can incorporate a nice soundtrack with it or turn it into a music video, then it was catchier and the words get caught in your mind. Because the whole concept behind making a movie in my classroom is to learn an art concept. We make Fugalflex. So they're supposed to be short, entertaining videos that teach you something about art. And back in the day of the Schoolhouse Rock videos, I learned concepts that I didn't even know I was interested in simply because the lyrics would get stuck in my head. So I wanted to try to put that in my art room, and it's working. My students are singing and dancing and making movies about art. Mm -hmm. And see, with me, it was because when we did music, I felt like there was a missing piece if we didn't have a visual. You know, if we only did music, I was robbing um, the students of a visual reminder, just much like you said, you know. So um, that's sort of the journey that I took. And like I said, I, now I'm into drawing and doing all this stuff. And this, I think the iPad has really changed all of that. I think that was the big turning point for me, where the kids could put everything together. Well, it's so multifunctional. It's your drawing device, it's your camera, it's your video camera, and you can also edit everything together and create the music. Yeah. So one piece, and it's so approachable. Mm -hmm. and you can delete it if it doesn't work. So why not try? And also, the kids want to do that. They don't see the arts anymore as a standalone music, standalone art, standalone, you know, theater. They they see it as a group project. A collaboration. And that's what's happening when we're working together to create one entertaining um, story or message that uh, makes our fugal flex. And I'm just loving that I'm stretching out of my comfort zone. I'm not a music teacher, but the kids can sing and I can sing and we can make sense of it the best we can. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'm not an art teacher, but you know, I can make the sense of it and I can do that and so I work harder at that. So, well, thanks, Trish. It's so nice sure. to see you in person. Thank you for <laughs> yeah. this time together. Yeah, okay. And you have a presentation too. Yes, we're um, actually talking about making fugal flex. So. so go check that out. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Music might be the hardest to master, but let me tell you a secret. Shh. Silence is just as important as sound. If I gave you a box of crayons, would you use the entire box? No, you wouldn't.
So in composing music, only use two or three notes. Yes, for the entire song. The songs I created for the opening and closing are only two and three note songs with apple loops. Lots of rests, lots of silence. When children are first taught to write stories, they write simple sentences. Then the teacher asks them to elaborate, expand, and explain. To a young student, it's all about adding stuff. I can do an entire song with three notes. Da, 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 da. Or two notes. Da, 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 da. Or even one note. Da, 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 da. Keep the rhythm the same. Each time you repeat something, change it slightly, but not too much. Leave lots of rests and silence. There you have it. Many classical musicians want to teach music theory and names of notes. Today, with technology, you don't need to know the names of the notes. Keep it simple and listen. Let your ear tell you what's right and wrong. Design is the key. Linda Keene is into design, and she also is a triple threat. Her website, next.cc, brings an added dimension to art through design. There, she has art, music, and media. Um, I am an architect, and I'm also a professor of architecture and environmental design at the school here at the Art Institute of Chicago. I have a practice that works on green initiatives between Milwaukee and Chicago, and with my partner, uh, started out making animated films. And then as chair of this department, bought the first computer to teach with. And that is how... Oh, 20 years ago, even more. And uh, started the first computer lab with our visual communication, or AKA graphic design department. And ever since then, have between the filmmaking, the architecture, and the computers, have been fascinated about how digital technology can be incorporated in the classroom. Right. And what I find so fascinating is that when I start to talk to you about my triple threat, oh, you, right. said, you said, oh, wait a minute, uh, <laughs> because you have video, music, and everything up on your site, and you, you call it something different from your aspect. And I, I like, actually, I like things better. Okay. So, but, I mean, it's really interesting. Well, my partner would like the triple threat because okay. it's a sports analogy. Um, it's called digital fluency, and it comes out of uh, the UK, um, their organization, Future Lab, which was working with their schools and Microsoft to introduce technology in the classroom. And digital fluency means introduction to and access to a broad band of uh, media, media that is used in the culture. So it doesn't really talk about computers per se, it's using any type of technology that helps you create communicate, and collaborate. I, I love it. I mean, that's great. So it's down, if you look at the site, it says digital fluency, and click on it, and all the journeys that introduce any type of digital use of tools or uh, interactives will be included. Right. Now, I notice all of your videos have music to it. Yes. And all of your beauty videos are animated. Mm -hmm. And all of your videos even have some narration as well. Yes, yes. yes, because as animators, when you do all those hand-drawn drawings and then you um, photograph them and then you put them in the film strip, the introduction of sound and text or voice and narration is critical to like creating a complete environment. And in architecture, we talk about creating complete environments that surround you as a person so that you have that experience. And the same is for film. So in 2000, we wrote an article about interactive environments and talking about the difference between film and architecture. So in film, we're sitting, watching the action. But in architecture, the architecture is by and large static, and we are actively moving through it. So those two things really fire all your synapses when you're learning, is what it turns out. And so we're very excited about that connection. So ever since we began, this is the third rendition of the website, and that we want you to be able to look at something, to engage in it, but then have it take off and move on you. Uh -huh. Because you want possibilities. You mm -hmm. want to inspire people to do other things. And it's a huge portal, many windows opening to many other places in the world. Uh -huh. 
Because I mean, you're really, this whole green initiative, mm -hmm. that's like the whole basis of it. That's what I find so fascinating. Well, and that's it, it's based because it's got to balance all the technology. Right. right, that's what I find so fascinating mm -hmm. is that it's technology, but it's really the environment. Right. I don't want to say anti-tech, but it's like the opposite. It is, and it's funny, in beginning to introduce this to teachers and to um, camps, the educational camps who really teach outdoors, didn't really have a lot of interest in it because it's technology. Yeah. And the technologists were like in a room like we are in now that yeah. was windowless working on the computer. And But actually that blend is essential and it's key for kids to learn. So when they do things on the computer, they know that they can take what they just experienced and learned and apply it out in the real world. Or they can go find something in the real world, come and scan it and manipulate it and use it on the computer to do something new. So it has to be seamless. And I think another thing that was so drawn to me is that you also believe that everything should be created by the person. Yes, it's student-driven. Student-driven, yeah, and I, that, I love that. I, mean, and I think that comes from being a designer, and part of the initiative of creating this nonprofit was that design is not taught in most of our schools in our country, even though it's taught in Canada and the UK. And design is project-based learning. It's like, well, mm -hmm. you let's build something. Let's yeah. do something and make something and test something. So it is, it totally fits into the whole STEM to STEAM yeah. discussion. And what it does is it helps the student um, stimulate a way to be curious and to find ways to learn about what they're interested in and then pursuing them. They help personalize learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, really to find their purpose. because. If the education is not about our relationship with the environment, it is about creating that character and nurturing that purpose or that potential. Oh, but I can talk to you. And of course, I have to say, you should have seen us. We spent, I think we spent 45 minutes downstairs talking, downstairs talking and another 45 minutes trying to get the right place to sit. Right, which we had to redesign in the school that I've designed because there is no sound room, soundproof room in this part of the school. And that's what I find so interesting is that I'm at the Art Institute and you think, okay, it's all about pictures and all that. And it is so noisy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so much going on. And right. It's such a creative place to be. Yeah. And people are trying all kinds of different things all the time. So anyway, I know one of the things that we talked about that I found was really interesting is that with the computer and with access to digital tools, yes. so much of it is a steep learning curve, yes. particularly as the programs get deeper. And it became our concern early on that we didn't want the program to be the master right. of the student. And so to do that, the student has to be given the freedom to create their own projects and use the technology in new ways that we may not have even imagined. And that's what's happening with kids creating apps and um, making things on the computer and getting your parents who don't know how to use this excited about it. So um. right, it's, it's it's really do your own thing. Mm -hmm. the DIY, they call it DIY. Right, it's, right. Do it yourself. Yeah. So it's and that's the whole. Thing. Well, Linda, like I said, I could. We're going to talk more. I, I, just, <laughs> I just love talking to you. It's just so nice and fun to find to find someone who comes from a different avenue, and you know, it's like we're coming in from different doors, but we're mm -hmm. in the same center. Really well, you come from music, and music is considered the universal language. Yeah. You don't have to understand it right. to appreciate it or enjoy it. And in a funny counterpoint, I would like to say that architecture is a universal language right. because we all live in it. Yes. And so we all either take it for granted or appreciate it or really know what we like about it or don't. Right. And so I'm, we're trying to elevate that whole understanding that everything around us people have created, and everyone in a K-12 classroom can be a creator and contribute to that. Oh, well, thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> Thanks. When you decide to become a triple threat, you will interact with your environment more. Now you are responsible for all original pictures. You have become a photographer. I am constantly taking pictures for my bank of pictures I will use. As you become more visual, now is the time to animate. I love the iPad app Doink and Sketchbook. I can create simple animations in Doink and export them into movies. I can draw layers using Sketchbook. By making two and three second movies, they soon morph into longer 15 second creations. I can compose music, but sometimes not using the traditional method of chord structure. 
you can also create music using various apps. All music is is organized sound. Use the same method of one, two, or three themes or notes. Repetition is essential. The movie process is the icing. This is where art and music connect to create a final piece. I have the examples of all my movies on my website www.carolbrose.com. It also has the apps associated with the movies. This has been an amazing journey and I hope I have inspired you to become a triple threat by creating your own pictures, composing your own music, and by producing your own movies.